Oh, hey. So I've been doing League Starter uh, Eater Exarch runs for Next League, and I'm doing videos for builds that turned out well. These are builds that I would consider good off-meta League Starters. These builds are built for SSFHC, by the way, since that is the mode that I mostly play. Uh, the, the idea behind this build is that it is difficult to get your attack speed to line up well with Mana Forge. That is typically why you see people use things like Scourge Arrow, despite the damage being pretty mediocre. No offense, Scourge Arrow. Absolutely love that skill. But uh, mines have an innate throw time of 3.3 .3 times a second, which gives you a similar effect to a channeled bow skill where you attack check so frequently that it's really difficult to really mess up your triggers too badly. Mines also have the added benefit of applying an aura for all of your other triggered bow skills, so it works in a supportive ways because in this case you're using high impact mine, which gives you double damage to all your other bow skills near it. Uh, this build initially was a far shot dead eye using burning arrow mines as the mana forge enabler. But I wanted to test out using Lightning Arrow as the main skill alongside Point Blank in a 4 link cast on crit Mana Forge Tornado setup. The reason for this is projectile skills which have an AoE on hit component can hit the tornado, causing AoE to hit the boss, and then the projectile itself can continue on to hit the boss as well, giving you a double hit effect. And obviously, Lightning Arrow feels significantly better than Burning Arrow. Uh, so far, I know the skills that work with this are Ellie Hit and Lightning Arrow. Uh, theoretically, Eye Shot should do it, but I got I just kind of had a lot of trouble getting that to actually work, so I'm not sure if that one does. Um, anyways, I, I recorded a quick clip to just showcase this interaction because it is very powerful and you can use it on a normal lightning arrow build. See one hit, tornado brutality, like it, shoot it, just hit the tornado and then hit the boss. Um, <laughs> don't, 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 don't look at that. that I don't think I'll ever be able to record a video and not die to the meatball phase in Exarch. It's just, it makes me get too nervous knowing I'm recording. So then I just always bl blast right into them. Anyways, uh, after I did my quest gear and my dead eye, I took off all of my dead eye's gear, rerolled a sab, since I wanted to test the sab version anyway, and rest Exarch and did it around level 83 in about eight hours. And that's what this video is recording, th that fight. Uh, my main takeaway from that was the double hit you get from Tornado Trigger makes using Burning Arrow burning arrow as your main trigger entirely unnecessary, and you can just use Lightning Arrow. Uh, like, my practice run POV says that I have about 600,000 DPS, but I know from doing this fight many times that, that I have significantly more than that because of the double hit effect. Uh, anyways, uh, regarding the different ascendancy choice, I think Sab feels more like a Mana Forge build and the Deadeye feels more like a mine build due to the Sab having way more cooldown reduction and the Deadeye having way more mine throw speed. And But but even even with that said, I would say that Deadeye is a significantly better choice because one, Tailwind feels incredible. It makes you feel way zoomier than the Sab version. But two, uh, I don't know if it, how many people have actually played mines with uh, like left clicking on a dead eye but your wind ward is up at 10 stacks almost always because anytime you, you throw a pile of mines you throw like three or four right and then you left click three or four times so all of a sudden you just immediately get your max kill in stacks so that means that you're also you're always very zoomy but on top of that when you do get hit you have 30 percent less damage taken from that hit and since you have high evasion uh, and it pops your guard skill you shouldn't get hit very frequently, and when you do, you should mitigate the hit very well, making it as ridiculous to, sa to say, but a, a very tanky Deadeye build. I know most people are used to Deadeye being a glass made of glass, which is normally the case. Um, in, in fact, uh, just to show the, the tankiness of this, I, I, record, I recorded the fight, and I, I, was, I got hit with a beam, and it dealt me almost no damage. So it was just like, well, I'm just going to start jumping into his attacks and see if any of them actually lose my health. And the vast majority of them did not see. Very minimal. Uh, he's going to beam me and I'm going to eat it. Nothing. It's pretty, it's, I don't know, pretty sick to feel that thick like early on on a dead eye with that level of damage. But uh, anyways, uh, one, I would say one of the best things about this build is that you get to start playing it around late Act 3 after you do the library quests because you need to get life tap support to actually trigger all your skills. And the damage is going to be very high compared to a normal league starter because you hit the boss with so many different things that it's, it's kind of like how when you're leveling early, like using a ton of different skills 
makes your damage incredible because you don't have a ton of links yet. And, and that's actually the case for this uh, till you know you actually start getting five or six links, where your damage is going to be higher than most of the build because you're hitting them with so many different things. Um, and I, I also I don't know uh, if there is an easier attack to level than a crit Ellie attack because since you are try Ellie. Uh, this is good for you, Ellie is good for you, Chris is good for you, like uh, literally like every mod on a bow you could get is good for you besides, uh, in this case, attack speed and dot multi type things or damage over time. Uh, however, with that said, I wouldn't recommend switching this build until you have the Leech Nose on the tree and even some additional source of life gain on hit, either like a few points in the excess sustenance wheel, uh, right by Sipsy Mago at Ranger Start, and you have something like a Shark Tooth Arrow Quiver, which is 60. 6 to 8 life gain on hit. Uh, Quiver, it shows up around late Act 1, early Act 2, it's a level 14 requirement. Uh, just because I, I really cannot stress enough how much uh, these mana triggers hurt your life total uh, at the low levels. Like, if you have two 4 link uh, mana forge life tap setups, you're triggering 4 bow skills of, say, around 200 life. If you only have 800 life, that's about a fourth of your life total every time those triggers go off, and they're going off multiple times a second. Uh, but you, you don't even notice this, like, when it's late, late, uh, when you're late in the levels and you have like 5,000 life and you're leeching over 1,000 life a second and you have tons of life gain on hit, but early on it, it is very painful, so you want copious amounts of life gain on hit and probably use a lot of life last just, just in case. I, uh, I have a, like, I, I was fighting Kataba and I was like, oh, I should probably just record this to show how absurd the, the life expenditure is. Because you can see my life just like ping pong like crazy. Uh, the damage is very high, but it is very uh, sketchy if you do not have life gain on hit. I, I tried switching uh, early Act 4, and I didn't really have very much life gain, and I had to just mash the hell out of the life, life button, and, or uh, life pot, and it was annoying as hell. Uh, now on to the POV. Uh, it's just going to be, you know, gen generic bow, crit, suppression, life, point blank. Uh, some prod speed just because it feels nice and then the prod mastery some pierce eventually get the sun gear and drop this and frenzy charges for mind throw speed uh, to get it a little bit nicer fitting with our cooldown for our mana forge setup uh, we don't really take much aura reservation on this tree it's kind of the same as taking this because socket pressure is very real in this build socket space is literally equal to damage when you're just trying to trigger as many bow skills as possible so that's why we just have this and uh, we don't really take much mine stuff because we are also a mana forge build. So the only thing mine cluster we do take is this because this node is 100% crit chance and 40 crit multi to all skills, not just mines. And then we just get this nice little region here. You get more damage out of something like uh, aura effect, but honestly, the, the life regen is going to be kind of nice because this build doesn't really have any. It has a ton of leech and life gain on hit, but not really any actual regen. Get some uh, life in ES here to support our ghost dance because ag again due to socket pressure we don't really want to run a blessing and then we have to go all the way up here uh, so ghost dance is also an incredible defensive layer still and it goes really well with our defensive kit of evade and then keeping up a high stack of wind ward so when we do get hit we mitigate the hit very well um, you could technically drop this but it, I'm telling you, when you left-click mines, it makes you feel incredibly tanky. And you could drop it for focal point. It would be a lot of damage. I just personally would not recommend that. Um, originally, like I was saying, I, I took far shot. I was thinking that, you know, far shot's normally an incredible amount of damage. But the way this build works is you do kind of want to have the mines near or on top of the boss because that aura effect's going to scale all your other skills. So... If you're throwing the mines near the boss and you're triggering your bow skills from far away they're not going to necessarily uh, affect each other uh, and if you're doing lightning arrows your main skill with tornado you want to be in the boss's ass anyway so it kind of just makes sense to go point blank with the way the builds actually played in practice so uh, i know far shot's going to seem like more damage but i think in practice it's really not uh with the way this build is played um just for, for gear, it's just, you know, a generic tri bow. This is double T2, ideally be double T3, or T2, T2, and uh, damage penetrates 14% of elemental resistances. Um, 
you know, just generic life suppression gear, fizz taken as, uh, as many places we can because we're not a termination build. We don't have any fizz mitt otherwise, like uh, lightning coil is incredible for us. Uh, f double fizz taken as here. Uh, generic life suppression, onslaught on boots is kind of nice, uh, but just life suppression, life wed, crit multi, increased evasion. These are all good things to get on your amulet. Uh, we are using Weathered Hunter, which I know seems kind of like an embarrassing anoint. Uh, but again, due to soccer pressure, I would really prefer not to run precision. You can, you can fit in precision, probably need an unsent ring. Um, and that's, that's perfectly acceptable, but that's, that's why that is there over a much more powerful anoint. Um, just j for the same reason, accuracy and life on gear and then life wet on the belt, uh, ideally crafted on CDR to lower your mana forge cool down a little bit more. Um, you can kind of track that with, so like you have this mana forge link, see this attack rate. So you don't really have to keep uh, mess with this too much because as long as you have a lot of a uh, mind throw speed, it's going to be feel fine ish. Uh, but if you want to get it like pretty close to as much as you can to matching the trigger, just mess with your main mind throw with things like additional frenzies, getting quality on things like swift assembly, quality on things like high impact mine or using trap and mine damage to lower your attack your mine throw speed until you get the throw rate to be about right there's a lot of ways to uh slightly increase your throw speed like you can just craft it on your amulet as well like increase mine throw speed um so leveling this build uh leveling this build is very simple it is literally just take all the proj damage nodes I take the movement speed here because it feels nice early when you're slow and don't have movement speed boots. And then you hit precise technique, get this cluster, and then the plus 100 accuracy to bows is going to make it so you your accuracy should be way above your life total to work with precise technique. Then hit point blank. Uh, I, I do grab on the three points here for a graceful onslaught to get onslaught because I think it feels really nice while leveling as well. Um, it kind of falls off a little bit once you start switching to mines and mines start killing stuff more than your other stuff. But you can use just a simple respec. Uh, and then I go up to uh, Clever Thief and then I take this extra point. This is around when I would recommend switching to a full Mana Forge setup. Before this, without the leech and without the life gain on hit, it is going to feel pretty crappy. Like I was saying, uh, your life total is going to get far too low and you're going to have to spam your life pot. So I would recommend switching around here. Um, as far as leveling up until you switch to your full mana forge setup with mines and all that jazz, uh, you can level with toxic rain or rain of arrows. Uh, once you hit level 12, uh, with a ballista of the same, and then, uh, just pretty much do that until here. Uh, or, or, I guess not, or, I mean, that's like pretty much it. <laughs> Until level 12, I usually level with Caustic Arrow, but you can level with Galvera. That's that's just personally just preference. Um, and then once you get to this where you can actually switch, I switch to uh, Rain, Rain of Arrows Mines, and then I have uh, as many Mana Forge setups as I can. Usually that is two separate Mana Forge setups that are four links, uh, green, 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 red, because it's Mana Forge, Life Tap, two bow skills, and then that's somewhere else. And then I have Mana Forge, Frenzy, and Snaring Arrow. And then my mine skill is usually Rain of Arrows, High Impact Mine, Charged Mines. Uh, you don't really make use of the Frenzies, but the throw speed is nice. And uh, it, it's, it's, most, it's mostly, honestly, just the throw speed. But uh, the fourth link can be pretty much anything, like either Conk Effect, Elemental Damage with Attacks. Uh, and I, I, have, I have all this listed here, by the way, in the notes. It will tell you pretty much uh, exactly what I just did. And once you switch over, you will pretty much just do Rain of Arrow Mines plus triggering Rain of Arrows and other various bow skills until you get extra two projectiles, in which case you can then switch over to uh, Lightning Arrows, your main skill, or Burning Arrows, your main skill. Um, Lightning Arrows should be fine, but since your crit's going to be pretty shit early, you're not going to be really triggering a Mana Forge Tornado setup, so it might be correct to just use Burning Arrow Mines for a while. Uh, it, it really doesn't feel as bad. Um, it is a lot more damage. It's just um, the clear does kind of lack. Uh, let's just kind of feel it out. It's They're literally the same color, so just level both and swap it out and just kind of get a feel for it, see what you like. 
Um, the sab tree is very, oh, I guess I should mention before we go into that. Um, definitely always take gathering wins first. It feels incredible, especially so as mines. Uh, one thing I do want to mention is I do take ricochet into endless munitions first, but if you are in hardcore, you should heavily consider taking windward as your second ascendancy because again, it just makes you super tanky. It does suck. And that you're going to have to take the plus one bow nodes or the plus one arrow nodes on the tree or just keep using rain of arrow uh, mines and rain of arrows in your like triggered setups and stuff. But I just, it's just something to think about because you don't have a ton of defense outside of this and you don't have something like lightning coil yet and fizz taken as on your helmet. So you're going to be a little squishy um, before this. Now the sab version, uh, very similar the same, same exact leveling. It's just, you're going to take a lot longer to get down to precise technique and point blank. So I, I do level the sab. Usually even do something like this. I usually do toxic rain, definitely not rain of arrows because <clears throat> you don't really have any damage on the trees. Uh, so toxic rain usually will feel a little bit better. And then when you get here, you can switch to rain of arrows and rain of arrow ballista. And then once you have this as well, then you can finally switch over to mines. Um, I would recommend taking Born in the Shadows first, but you can also take Light Clockwork first if you do want to switch to your Mana Forge setup. It's just you can't realistically do that until like round level 44, so you can either wait to get to your Ascendancy till then, or just kind of not really make much use of it, which, which is fine too. It doesn't really matter, and you don't need the power. Bow, bow leveling is very powerful as is. For the final Sab Tree is pretty similar to the dead eye the difference is you have to take the bow nodes on the tree and then threat makes the threat of hope far more powerful on this because you can just save all these attack speed travel nodes that do nothing for you um the sab does get a ton of damage out of the aura effect from this mine node and you get a ton of damage out of explosive expert a lot of people don't realize how much damage this is this is like almost an aspect of carnage usually this, this node is crazy damage wise and then this node is almost a fortify. So Sa Savage is a generically good ascendancy. I just think, honestly, Windward is enough that I think it's correct to just go Deadeye. Um, but uh, last last thing is I have an easy trade league power section here where you can get things to, you know, in trade league that'll just really boost your damage or your defenses like Lightning Coil is huge. This one's not too bad to farm, uh, the Coming Storm. Uh, it's not as easy as a lot of cards, but you could probably farm it up in a day once you have your map complete and you have some favorite slots. Thread of Hope, large, huge, like I said. This thing is absolutely insane because you just get all the extra prod, you get all these damage damage, you get the suppression, you get this. It's wild. Ins insanely good Thread of Hope spot. Thunderfist, um, any pseudo six link uh, you can get like that or Tempest Binding is really good in a build like this because you have a ton of different Mana Forge setups. So essentially giving Another one of your mana forge setups, a uh, six link, is a lot of damage. And honestly, uh, that should be pretty much it. Uh, thank you guys for watching, and uh, good luck at League Start.